Hi, my name's Robin Story. I'm a ghostwriter specialising in life stories and memoirs. And today I'm going to tell you the story of my experience in writing the life story of my client, Bob. Now this is an interesting story for a couple of reasons. The first one being that I had to be very creative in the way that I wrote the life story. And I'll tell you uh, why shortly. And secondly, when Bob finally published his book, the response that he had to the book was just so unexpected that neither he nor I could have possibly anticipated it. Now, I must preface this by saying that I wrote this book for Bob as a ghostwriter, so that means that I wrote it in the first person in his voice as if he were writing it, so he was attributed as the author. In many situations, uh, a ghostwriter needs to sign a non-disclosure non agreement when they write a life story, which means that they're not allowed to disclose to the public that they have written a story. But in this particular instance, I didn't sign a non-disclosure agreement and Bob is more than happy for me to talk about this publicly and he's always acknowledged uh, my um, part in the process. So I'm not contravening any confidentiality agreement by telling you this story. So I first met Bob a couple of years ago. He was 96. He was living in an aged care facility and he had been wanting someone or he had been wanting his life story written for over 20 years and just had never been able to find the right person to do it. So after he told me a little bit about his life, I soon realised that this was going to make a really good story. And when I agreed to write it for him, he was absolutely ecstatic. I'll tell you briefly about his life, um, just so that you know that the basic story. Uh, Bob was born in Scotland, but came to Australia as a very young child. And as a teenager, he became interested in the ambulance and he joined the volunteer ambulance service. And when World War II broke, up, broke out, he went to the recruiting office and eventually was um, put into the seventh field ambulance. And he served in the seventh field ambulance during World War II in New Guinea. And when he came back from the war, he joined the civil ambulance in Queensland, where he lives. And he consequently had a 39 year career in the civil ambulance. When he first joined, after he came back from the war, he was absolutely amazed to find that there was no training and that officers were just expected to pick it up as they went along or learn from the senior officers. So Bob and a fellow officer got together and tried to instigate a training program for ambulance officers. The, only, the other thing that had surprised Bob was the fact that the procedures and the equipment that they used were really out of date. The ambulance service as a whole was really totally behind the eight ball. But Bob came up against a lot of resistance in trying to introduce training and it was 10 years of constant agitating before he was finally allowed to introduce a training program. And from there, things escalated. Eventually, a dedicated training school was started. Uh, Bob was also instrumental in um, introducing a lot of changes to the service to make sure that their procedures and their equipment were modernised um, and, and updated. And he really did make a great contribution to the ambulance service of today. And the Queensland Ambulance Service today is a very is a world class service. And at the time that Bob was in the ambulance service, he wasn't really given a lot of recognition for what he'd done. Although, uh, 25 years after he'd retired, he did receive the uh, Distinguished Service Medal. So when it came time to begin writing, as I said earlier, I had to devise a different sort of a process for Bob. My normal process when writing a life story for a client is to interview them and get the information that I need over a number of sessions, record those interviews, have them transcribed, and then write up the story. 
and then email it to them or, or maybe print it out and give it to them uh, for them to read and make any suggested changes. But in Bob's case, this wasn't going to work because firstly, he was vision impaired and secondly, his computer skills were pretty minimal, which is fairly normal for someone of his age. So doing the whole thing and then sending it to him to read wasn't going to work. He did have a magnifying machine, which meant that if you printed something out in very large writing, he would then be able to place the page on the machine and read it. But this was a very slow process and to read a whole book like that would have been a very laborious and painstaking process. So we devised a system whereby uh, after I'd um, done a few interviews, I would write up a couple of chapters of the book and I would then go to Bob and I would sit and read them out to him. Now, he was also hearing impaired, so I had to make sure that I read it clearly and succinctly so that he could understand it. And Bob would then let me know if I'd got any facts incorrect. Then, as well as that, Bob's son, Greg, who was an integral part of the process, and this was really good for Bob as well as me, would print out those couple of chapters that I'd written in very, very large writing, in very, very large printing, I should say, and then in between that time and when I next arrived, Bob's homework, I always used to call it his homework, was to read those two chapters uh, in the magnifying machine. And that meant that he could catch any errors that he hadn't caught with me reading it out loud. So this meant that it was a gradual process uh, as we went along rather than trying to, to read and edit the whole thing at the end. And this worked really well. And for Bob in particular, this process really um, gave him a new lease of life. He had lost his wife about 12 months earlier and they'd been married almost 70 years. And the whole process of writing his life story gave him a renewed sense of purpose. During the interview process, I also tried to um, get him to recall different emotions he'd had uh, arising from different events in his life, which was often difficult for Bob because particularly being a male from the era that he was from, men often weren't used to thinking about um, and describing emotion. But emotion is what um, makes the story interesting and what makes the reader uh, really empathise with, with the protagonist in the book. So, um, and, and this often resulted in, in, in some tears because especially when we talked about um, his wife, uh, that was still very raw and, and so it was an emotional time for Bob. But as well as that, the whole process of talking about his life and we went started right from the beginning, from as, as far back as he could remember as a young child and worked our way through chronologically. And it was amazing how many memories floated up to the surface that he'd, that he'd totally forgotten. And so this was, this was a good process for him um, to be able to reconnect with those memories. So once we'd finished writing the book and Bob had approved the final draft, I then sent the book away to be professionally proofread. Now, some ghostwriters don't include proofreading uh, as part of their process, but I always do, and I factor the cost into the quote that I give because I always like to pre present a polished and clean manuscript to the client, um, especially if they're going to publish it as Bob's intention was to do that. So once it came back from the proofreader and I'd made the necessary changes and the proofreader really just checks for, for spelling, grammar, punctuation. So that technically was the end of my um, job with him. Most ghostwriters don't include publishing as part of their process. However, Bob wanted to publish this in a book so that members of the public would be able to read it as well as his, his family. 
And so for an extra fee, I uh, told him that I would then uh, facilitate the publishing process for him. So this entailed me going and approaching various publishing publishers, getting quotes. Um, we decided together on who would be the most appropriate publisher. I then liaised with the publisher during the whole process of, of that. Um, and then when we were sent the printed proofs, I then went through them and um, made any, any further changes. Uh, even after it's been proofread, you'll often find once it's printed on the page that there are things that have been missed. So finally, after the, uh, that was all done, the book was published. And this was it. It was called The Ambo, From Field Ambulance to Civil Ambulance and More. Now, Bob had a book launch at the facility that he lived in. And I, must, I should say here that during the process of writing the book, he was still in touch with a lot of people from the ambulance service and they were very supportive of his endeavour to write the book. So when Bob had the book launch, he had a lot of the senior members of the ambulance service attend the launch. And they subsequently bought um, copies of his book to be put in all the ambulance stations in Queensland. So at the time of the launch, Bob received quite a bit of local media exposure. They had the couple of local newspapers there at the launch. Somehow or another, someone did some research and found out that Bob was actually the oldest debut author in Australia as a result of having published this book. So immediately, Bob was inundated with calls from the media. He did a lot of interviews for magazines, newspapers. He did interviews on radio shows. He was into, even uh, had a segment on a national TV current affairs program called 7.30. And this was just incredible. Uh, he was just blown away by all this exposure that he'd received. And, you know, it was just something that could not possibly have been anticipated. We had no idea. Bob was just happy to have his book published and have it available in, in online bookstores so that people all over the world could read his story. And he was thrilled enough with the prospect that strangers, people he'd never met, were buying and reading his story. But to have all this extra exposure was was really something quite special for him. And for Bob to actually hold this book in his hand after over 20 years of wanting it to happen, it was just a really wonderful occasion for him. And for me, this is as much a part of my satisfaction, probably more um, of my satisfaction, being able to make a dream come true for Bob as well as the writing process, which I really love, it's being able to help someone to do something that they've been wanting, often been wanting to do for a long time. So that's Bob's story. He's still going strong, still getting lots of attention from, about his book. And if you've been thinking of writing your life story or you are writing it and you want some help, in, in some feedback or some criticism, because I also offer a mentoring service, please uh, put your, there's a link in the description below. Uh, follow that link and that will take you to my website. And you pick, click on the big green button, put in your name and email address, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And we can have a discussion about how I can help you. I look forward to talking to you soon.